many friends. Welcome back to my channel. This is Terry with the Covered Chipboard. And today this video is about a new um, series that I'm doing on the channel and on my blog, which is under the CoveredChipboard.com. We're going to have a craft along through the year of 2024. The first one will start on February 1st and then we'll have one each quarter and I have the uh, dates listed on my blog, but I'll list them below. I believe it's May, August, and November are the other three. Each one is going to be a separate project. The first two are probably going to be related to this project here, which is a, a ready-made kit that you can get on Amazon. We'll get into that in just a minute, but I wanted to kind of show an example of the other ones. Um, the second one I won't be able to show because it's kind of a continuation of this. But um, the point of this is to be able to take a kit and we're going to bash it, modify it, add to it, um, do some different techniques on it. And just to show you what you could do with a ready-made kit if you want to go beyond what the kit offers. The other two are kits from Petite Properties. This is a Grandma's Retreat, and it's a 148th size scale. <clears throat> this other one is Butterick House, and it's a Petite Properties, and it is a 176, but it's what they call a low relief, and I'll show you an example. Um, this 148, if you can kind of get an idea, I think, from, if I could get it around here, um, well, that's like one side of the building. So you can see it's pretty small. It's a, It still is 148, but to me it runs smaller than normal 148s. And it may be just because it's a little cottagey type house. And um, we're going to do a lot of different techniques with this one. So that's one. And then the other one, this Butterick house, it's uh, what they call a low relief, which this is an example. So this is a... Uh, 176 size, but it's low relief, so it's not deep. So this one will be, I don't know if you can tell from here on the side, but it's shallow, just like that. You don't do the insides. We only are going to decorate the outside, and it does, all of their house kits offer holes so that you can um, put lights inside if you want. So that's an example of that. This is another 176 size but it is not low relief, I don't believe. It might be, let's see if I've, no, I don't believe it is. So this is part of a, a, a set called Cobblestone Snicket. And um, it's like seven different buildings and they all butt up next to each other and it makes a street scene. But I wanted to just give you an idea of what you can do with these. Now, a lot of people will see these and go, oh, there's impossible. I can't work that small of a scale, but you can. It's really easy. It's not hard, especially since you're only doing the outside and not the inside. So that gives you two examples. So now we'll get into this. Like I said, this was a kit that I bought. Um, it's called the Magic Shop Kit. It's on Amazon, and I'll have a link to it down below in the description. And we're going to kind of today just open the kit up and look at it and see what all we have to work with. It looks like, to me, the top here is open, which I'm not that crazy about, but not having gotten into the kit, I don't know if that's, there's a reason why they left it open, but we're, we're actually going to add to it and bring it up higher with another building on top, which is going to be the shopkeeper's house. And that will be the second quarter project. So let's open this and see what we've got here. I just kind of briefly opened it and looked, but I didn't really go through anything in the kit. I'll set that aside. And these are our, our instructions. Um, from when I did look at this before, the instructions are pretty um, extensive. So they give you a lot of different um, ways of telling you how to put things together. And we'll get into that more as we build it. But it looks like a fairly easy kit. Um, 
nothing really super difficult or hard. I think it'd be a good kit for somebody who wants to get into miniatures, but you've never done miniatures before. So, well, there's part and some little trash pieces. So, um, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's really, really a cute um, kit, I believe. This would be a lot of the wiring. It does come with lights, and it looks like they are battery operated. Another thing I'm not that crazy about, there's pros and cons with battery operated kits um, for lighting. It makes them where you can move them around a lot easier. So there's, you know, that's a benefit. However, you're stuck with replacing batteries all the time, which drives me up the wall. So I'm not sure if we'll go ahead and use this or if we might go to a different lighting type that I normally use on all my mini houses. There's just some little bits and bobs in here and hinges and little tiny screws. Those will be fun. It looks like they even give you a paintbrush. I believe the kit has everything you possibly could need in it. This is the big, there's some glue that came with it. I don't know if we'll use this glue or not. I have some E6000 glue and I also have some of my Eileen's quick, quick dry glue. This looks like part of the base probably. Um, this is a plastic, so this is probably going to be for the windows. I'm surprised that that hasn't been cut already. That's kind of interesting, but it's thin enough. I don't think we're gonna have any problem cutting it with like a, a craft knife. Um, a lot of times when you need to cut things like this, I have a, a knife that's on my supply list. This is a an Ulfa, uh, like a box cutter. And it comes with a lot of different blades and then you can buy refills for the blades and to use it, you just unscrew this little thing and push it forward and screw it down tight. These little puppies are super sharp. You, you can cut your finger off with these. So you have to be kind of careful when you're using them, but they're really good for cutting things like plastic and stuff. So, like I said, I haven't looked through the instructions, but I'm assuming this is for glass. And you may not have to cut it. It may be already pre-cut pre -cut to a size needed. And then here we've got some papers. I was looking at something earlier. We're going to open this and see. Um, I'm hoping these are stickers and not paper that has to be cut out. If it turns out that they have to be cut out, if you want to cut really, if you cut real easy, easily, you could cut them out. If not, I may, yeah, now see, these aren't stickers. Not that I can tell they're not. No. Well, no, it's not a sticker. Um, but some of these, what I might do is scan them in and then turn them into stickers. These are either stickers or they're, okay, they're just punch outs. It's a nice quality paper though. So I can keep that from falling apart. And then let's see, we've got some books. These, the books are stickers. So it looks like part of them are stickers, part are cutouts. Yeah, cutouts or punch outs. And looks like maybe some more punch outs. So. These look like stickers. Yeah, stickers. More punch outs for the walls. The brick's really nice. The images are really nice on this. It's like flooring, some more bookcase things. Um, there's a lot of these, the things in here for, um, and there's the last sheet. So it's got some really good, nice images. <clears throat> and there's a lot of things where I've noticed with these kits where it will be like just a piece of uh, wood or chipboard and then you just place a sticker on top. They're not really three dimensional. So some things like that, we may wind up doing them a little differently. We'll just have to see 
what they look like. It, it, you know, if it's something that's down inside, it's probably, you probably won't notice that it's not three-dimensional dimensional, and it'll probably look fine. Let me move these out of the way. And we will glue little bits and pieces. I don't want to really open this yet because I don't want to lose anything till we get into it. But let's take a look at this and see. I'm not real crazy about the green color. I may wind up changing that. It's a fairly good quality of wood. So I think this would paint very easily. You might take a, we might wind up using a little bit of, looks like it has a sheen to it. So you might have to take some fine grit and kind of give it a little bit of a tooth. And that's some other pieces. Same thing here. Just all of your wood parts. Some more. Some of this is furniture pieces as well. Find some more of this. I thought it was really interesting the way that they've done these, uh, the windows on the outside, like the showcase windows. Because I was wondering how they got them curved. And, and now, after looking at the instructions earlier, I see, and it looks really nice. So that's all that is. So there's not a ton. Uh, as far as the main construction, I think most of the work is going to be in building the pieces that go inside and all the little fiddly parts. But that gives you an idea of what we're looking at. And again, I said we're going to um, change this around a bit and just kind of add to it, make it look a little bit less like the kit or a kit and make it look a little bit more handmade. Yeah, so it looks like there's about four, four or five um, furniture pieces that go inside. So, um, and I did notice in watching other videos on this kit, and there are several out there, that they leave the wires for the lighting showing a lot of times, which I don't like. So we're gonna find a different way to run the lighting so that you don't see the cords. But so that's it. I'm not sure what that is unless that's part of something extra in the back there. Oh, looks like maybe that'd be a nice something to do and write and date when you made it and maybe attach it to the bottom. The base here is paper. So we're gonna switch that up and we're gonna actually do a technique uh, to make this look like cobblestones on the bottom. Just some different things like that. So I think it ought to be really fun. And then with this, when I do this, I'm going to have um, videos of everything I do. I'm going to record as I'm uh, building it. And then I'm going to um, also have a step-by-step -step with photos post on my blog. So we'll be able to um, refer back to that and it will be a situation where you can just work on this at your own speed, your own time. Um, so that's about it. That kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at for the Craft Along series. If I will put a link in the description box below, but if you're interested in doing this project with me and following along, we may even do like a Facebook Live at some point with it, maybe halfway through. And, um, but if you'll go to the link for the sign up um, news and updates on this whole series of craft along projects on the blog, then you will get a notice sent to your email every time I post a new um, blog post or a new video. So you might want to do that. And again, I'll put a notice or a link down in the description box for you. So that's it, guys. Um, I'm looking really forward to getting started on this. I will probably start on it um, 
either if not this weekend, next week. I have some orders I have to do and get out. Um, and I'm still finishing up getting the blog updated. The theme I had been using for years has finally gotten too old and they're not updating or are um, changing it up anymore. So I've had to change my theme, which changed a lot of different things. So I'm just about finished with that. I hope to finish that either today or tomorrow. And then um, Sunday or Monday, get my orders done and shipped out of here. And then I'll start on this. So I'm guessing sometime next week. And in the meantime, you could go ahead and order your kit if you want to do it with us and get that sent to you. As far as the Petite Properties kits, if you want to do those, I would get those ordered as soon as possible. The site is petiteproperties.com. I've listed this. There is a post on my blog listing these two kits, so you'll know which ones to get. They're out of the UK. They do ship fairly quick. I think I got these and from the time I ordered them. Well, I ordered them, and then I think I had them within two to three weeks. So, you know, maybe sooner. <clears throat> so, it just depends. But they do sell out fairly quick. If you... Um, I am going to give them a heads up of what I'm doing. So, you know, hopefully they'll maybe have some extras of these put up in the shop. And then... Um, but I think if you... Um, go there and they're not, they're out of stock, you might be, could email, uh, email them and explain what you're wanting and they might get it out to you or cut you one extra. It, it just depends. I don't know how their operation works from day to day, but they're really good people and they're really, they work real well with crafters. So, but I would go ahead and get them ordered pretty quick. And they're fairly inexpensive kits too. This was, this is in Lyra. I don't remember what the cost was US, but it's not bad at all. Um, so that'll be it for this video. And I will see you next time once I get started working on the magic house or magic shop rather. Until then, have a good day, stay crafty, and we'll see you next time. Bye.